All right. Welcome back to another episode of the Perfect 10 Podcast. Did I tell y'all Happy New Year's? Oh, Happy New Year. Yeah. Well, yeah. Happy New Year. Well, it's tomorrow. Be, tomorrow will be New Year's Eve. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, okay. so note that means top 50. Top 50. Yeah. Also, um, you know, if you're partying tonight or you're partying tomorrow night, slide back to last year. I think right before our top 50 songs, we had pregame party songs come out. Crank it. Yeah. Uh, I think I actually made, I think you can go to Spotify or Apple Music and look up the perfect 10 Jake's picks and the perfect 10 Dan's picks yep. of our list. Yeah. I know I did it. I, I'm pretty sure it's on Spotify. Could be. <clears throat> but yeah. Uh, okay. So yeah, top 50. Uh, today we are giving y'all, if y'all listen to the pod at all, you know, you're getting top 50 fictional characters. Yes. We've been hyping up for about close to like six months, I think. Yeah. So I don't know how you did your list exactly. When I did mine, I did exactly what the title says i did top 50 fictional characters yes that's not, not just tv not just movie this is across all mediums and i didn't do necessarily how well a character was played or who just the idea of the character or yeah i just did the character yeah same here so the my list would be totally different if it was best played characters yeah best acted roles would be another list. best acted roles yeah. Okay. That should list. definitely be a different list. Yeah. We'll get uh, David Blaine up here for that one. Yeah. Not yeah. Street Magic guy. Yeah. So, not like, so like, mom was based on like either creativity or like how unique it is or how influential it was. That. I did that. Especially the influential. That one, that one. Is and like how it affected pop culture. Like, exactly. There's a lot of characters that and were did, much more than just a character. And did they stay in the test of time? Right. Um, so I'm glad we're on the same wavelength there. Yeah. So I thought for sure, like, cause I could have easily done a totally different list of my favorite, just like, like, yeah, acted roles. Yeah. yeah. It'd be totally different. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and disappoint all y'all. I guarantee you. Well, I know on my list, I don't have a single one. I guarantee I'm if I was a betting man, which I am, I'd bet that Jake does not have a single person from the office on his. Correct. I don't, I don't either. Not an office podcast. I have a handful of different TV shows represented, but I got a bunch of TV shows. I mean, The Office. I have a few. It's too awkward of a TV. It's like yeah, it's not my. It's I not get. My, I understand like what it's, but what it is. I grew up with different comedy influence and what I find funny. So therefore, I yeah. I don't find it funny for me. If you find it funny, more power to you. Yeah, fine. I mean, it is a very popular show. I just couldn't get into it. Yeah, no, same with Scrubs. Like, I'm assuming you probably don't have Walter White in your list. No, I don't. Yep, I don't either. Mm -mm. Don't uh, have Tony Soprano. He almost made it. Almost. He was, he, he was uh, scratching the surface. Uh, Yeah. But we're not doing honorable mentions. No, I have a handful, but I had to leave them off. Dude, I've flip-flopped so many people in and out of my list. Typical politician. You uh, flip-flopping bastard. Well, I mean... <laughs> I would say my honorable mentions, but the thing is, we're doing top 50. You're basically getting 40 honorable mentions. 100, yeah. So, you know. All right, so let's crack open a beer. I already cracked mine, dude. And I got an extra uh, uh, kettle soda lime locked and loaded for when this beer runs let's out. Let's do it. Uh, so buckle up. Enjoy our top 50 New Year's. Fictional characters. Uh, and, dude, honestly, like, I really only tried, like, I vaguely tried to put my... 11 through 50 in kind of an order. Yeah. I was more concerned about my 10 through one as far as like, yeah, of course we're the perfect 10, not the perfect 50. Right. So, so we, we focus obviously more on our top 10, right? But I did. And the other 40, don't get me wrong, it's impossible I, to put them in order. I mean, I did my best. I don't know how I would have created a rating system to get if it. If you would like, like if you say, well, why'd you add this at 47 when you're, uh, when it's clearly better than your number 33. And I'm like, I don't, I, I won't probably argue with you, but if right. you talk shit about my top 10, well, then let's go. I'll argue I with hear you. you. Maybe uh, about the top 20, I'll argue with you my top 20. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do 10, 10. We're going to do 10, 10, 10, 10, whatever, from like down to 40, down to 30, down to 20. And then 20 to 15, we're going to do five. 15 to 10, we're going to do five. And then the classic, uh, classic three, format. two, two, two one, 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 one. Yep. Yeah. Add that up. Yeah. Uh, all right. So my number 50 spot, I got Bill Nye, the science guy. What is he fictional though? He he's playing a character. He I mean he honestly he was in my honorable mention until last second. I I threw him into the 50 spot. I don't think he's fictional. Is his, but real, I name, can't. Is his real name Bill Nye? Yeah. Well, he was definitely playing a character though, because 
he's totally different. Like when he got on Twitter, totally different than when he was playing his okay. character piece. He it was a it character up. piece. Yeah, he's he's a he's a parody of himself in that. Okay, yes. I'll give it to you. Okay, yeah. okay, I'm gonna give you that. And it's because a TV of one show. Of he's a character on a TV show. Yeah. So, uh, my number forty nine spot. There's no way you're gonna know who this this is. I got Navin Johnson. Couldn't tell you. Steve Martin from The Jerk. Ooh, forgot his name, but yes, I forgot. He was born about a poor jerk. black child, dude. His character, like somebody hates these cans. And with him like, going, his, in- his how dumb he is. Yeah, he's he's such an idiot. And but- he he invented the glasses thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then got screwed on the patent or something. I don't even remember. Yeah, one of my favorite parts is when he busts in his uh, black mama's black adopted mama's room late at night because he thinks he's black. Right, he thinks he's he's not he, blind. He, yeah. He's not blind. Yeah, he thinks he's black. He busts in his room, his mama's room, wakes her ass up, says, "Mama, look, I got rhythm," <laughs> yeah. and he clearly does. <laughs> and his his hands and feet are all oh, way off, dude. Probably one of the best comedies from the seventies. Oh yeah, which we still got to get to that list at some point. That's gonna be a hard one. But like, but I, the jerk will probably be number one for me. So yeah, that's the jerk. Uh, Forty eight spot. I got Homer Simpson. I feel like we don't have time to go through every single one of these. Is the problem? Yeah, you just you just fire them off. Some of them you can stop and talk about them if you want. So Homer Simpson, you know, obvious. What one of the longest got running him, TV got, shows got, of all time? I got him much higher. Okay. Number forty seven, fictional character. Uh, earmuff. Spoiler alert. I, I'm assuming there's no children. Listen to this podcast, but I got Santa Claus. Yeah, I'm too low. Okay. Uh, 46. I should have had him higher, but it's just, I had to eventually just set the list and forget it. Uh, I got Charlie Kelly. Good pick. Always almost sunny. had him. Almost had him. I, mean, I almost had him. Clearly, I was going to put uh, uh, Glenn Howard and uh, Glenn almost made it. Charlie, I'm saying Frank almost made it. But Charlie, clearly the, the best uh, role. Uh, number 45. I got Raymond Reddington. A lot of people are probably gonna hate that pick. Everybody loves Raymond. No. Wait, Raymond Reddington. Yeah, Red Reddington. You ever watch The Blacklist? No. Uh-uh. Okay, he's the he's the main character of The Blacklist. Okay. Uh. Uh, number forty four. I got Leonidas the first. Boo. Gerard Butler from Three Hundred. Boo. Okay. I hate that fucking movie. Yeah, I know you do, dude. It, it, I mean, as a his as a as a wannabe historian, I hate that movie. Oh, dude, it's not made to be historically I mean, accurate. I mean, it's, it's an just, action movie. Meh. Nah. Yeah, whatever. Uh, number uh, 43, I got uh, John. Uh, like, So the thing is, you're not going to recognize the names of these characters, but you know the character. I got John Creasy. Okay. Denzel Washington from uh, Man on Fire. Yes. Okay, very similar role back to back here. I got Clyde Shelton. Uh, Gerard Butler from uh, Law Abiding Citizen. Oh, that's a good one. Baller. I mean, Law by and Simpson is an incredible, very underrated movie. Underrated movie. Yeah. If it had came out in the 90s, it would have been held as an all time classic. Okay. I think the time frame when it came out, it just wasn't a good time for it to drop. Right. It was during a time. Well, that was Olympus has fallen, Angel has fallen, London has fallen. Yeah, all those came right around that same time. Like, if they would have made that with like Bruce Willis in the 90s, it would have murdered. Uh, my number 41. A lot of people are going to think this is way too low. I got Ferris Bueller. Don't have him. Okay. I got other John Hughes so like, character. So, for instance, so Ferris Bueller is the character name. Immediately, ever. I mean, I guess it is Maybe Ferris time, Bueller's day why. off. But, uh, like, most of these others, you don't real recognize the actual character's name. You just remember the character. Yeah, you remember Cameron, Ferris, and that's it. You don't you, – nobody really remembers the girls. Her name was Sloan. But I mean, everybody remembers the principal. Nobody remembers his name. Yeah. Great, great movie. I love Ferris Bueller. Again, so that, that's my 50 I've, through 41. All right, so let me go ahead and start mine. You just end it with a uh, John Hughes guy. I'm going to start off with a John Hughes guy, probably my favorite John Hughes guy. It's a very niche character, but his John Hughes' best movie is The Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club sucks, dude. Whatever, dude. All right, <laughs> but the, everybody in that movie is horrible. Like the guy running detention, all the kids, horrible. But there's one character in there who's not horrible. And that's Carl the Janitor. I got Carl the Janitor from Breakfast Club at number 50. He was the only character that that didn't feel like he needed everybody's approval. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of the point of the movie, And right? didn't want to control any other people. He chose his own path of serenity and service. I love Carl. He's a spiritual master. Okay. Yeah, that's why I have him. All right. Great pick. I'll, I'll, uh, I love Carl the Janitor. 50 spot, I'll let you have it. Uh, 49. Uh, we're going to shift over to TV. 
I got Ross Geller. Okay, dude. You of all people to have that in your top 50. What? I thought you hated friends. I like friends. Speaking of friends, hey, it's, the, it's the friends uh, Thanksgiving Palooza shirt. Well, I'm rocking Baton Rouge Kingfish. Oh, classic! Represent. Uh, uh, so yeah, I thought I, you I like hated friends, friends dude. Yeah. Okay, now I mean, I, I love the I internet. Love friends. Hates friends for I would have put Joey myself. Not a Joey guy. Not much of a Chandler guy. I always like Ross. I yeah, thought he was the hilarious. I didn't really like Chandler too much. You know, such a try hard R- Ross. I feel like is I'm the most similar to. I guess. Yeah, me too. Uh, uh, let me, but Joey is the funniest. No, I say Ross is. Yeah. That's because I relate more to him than anybody. All right, uh, staying with TV. I'm just going to spoiler alert. A lot of people from this show is making this list. Number 48, I got Elaine Bennis from Seinfeld. Okay. I thought you hated Elaine. No, I don't. She's my least favorite character, but she's still a great character. Okay. All right. Well, that, that's fine. That's same fine. same uh, show. Number 47, I got Frank Costanza. Oh, dude, I would have Frank way higher. But do you? I don't. Oh, well, then shut the fuck up. <laughs> I have. Okay. We're, okay. Keep, <laughs> keep on. Keep on keeping on. You don't have George, do you? Dude, look who you're talking to. Yeah. Of course I got George. Fair. All right. All right. Uh, number 46, I got Jason Voorhees. Okay. Yeah. Well, f- that's a, that's a, that's a, you know, popular one. Number 45, I got Captain Crunch. That's not a character. Why isn't he? Well, I guess he is a fictional mascot of yeah. cereal. Yeah. So I guess but, he technically he is a character. But I support my troops and I mean Captain Crunch. What does he do? Is he in commercials? I guess. Yeah, he was in commercials. I don't, they don't run Captain Crunch commercials anymore. All right, whatever. Next, next pick. Okay. Uh, Number forty-four. I got Freddy Krueger. All right, that's an odd mix in between Krueger and Voorhees. Captain Crunch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right uh, <laughs> 43 i got newman from seinfeld all right i, I hate newman so much but i love him but that's the the, why he's such a great character uh, uh, he's uh, such a little fucking weasel dude everybody hates everybody hates norman dude. and in my 42 i got his little his uh pic his partner in crime i got kramer okay wait i mean that's obviously way too low kramer okay i mean I got some heavy hitters coming. All right, all right, all right. And uh, my number forty-one spot, I got Obi Wan Kenobi from Star Wars. Fitting for the list, yeah, yeah. I don't have, I don't have iconic. Any, I don't have any Star Wars characters in mind. Just, just because you think you can make it. Yeah, I mean, well, and just because I just never was big on Star Wars. All right, so my number forty spot, I got. I should have looked up his last name. I'm sure it said it in the movie. I got Alan. Oh, from Hangover. Yeah. Oh, uh, good pick. Zach Galifianakis. Good pick. They don't, don't have him, but that's a good pick. Yeah, Alan, just because, <laughs> like I say, this is top 50 fictional characters. His character. And the first Hangover movie was great. So, again, that's one of those movies I think would be held in much higher regard had it not been for the sequels. The sequels were good, though. They were, but I feel like they pumped them out too soon. Like, if the, se- like if the Hangover 2 came out like, Seven years after the first one, that would have been it would have killed. And the third one would have came out seven years after that, killed. Like Alan's character is so oblivious, such a child, right? Like, I mean, just I got to go back and watch The Hangover again, dude. Alan is freaking. Alan hilarious. is the best. Number thirty nine spot, I got Bobby Boucher. Don't have any Sandlers. Oh, uh, the no Sandlers, no Sandler. That's bold. Uh, Fun fact though, technically uh, it's Bobby Boucher Jr. Also, yeah. Uh, Happy Gilmore did when I first cranked out this list. He did debut at my forty spot, and he just got bumped out. Okay, uh, thirty-eight. Uh, I got Rod Kimble, Andy Samberg, Hot Rod. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Rod. Okay, yeah. Like I, that pick. I didn't remember his last name being Kimble, but me neither. Kimble threw me off. Most actually, like I went back and looked at everybody's actual names. Like that's what, I ain't got time that's for what that. throws you off more. I ain't got time. Is for having that. the full first and last character name. Uh, number thirty-seven. Honestly, probably should have had it higher. I got Joe Dirt. Uh, you got him in there? No. Nah. Okay. Well, I'm not hating the pick. No, Joe Dirt's great stuff, dude. Uh, 36, I got White Goodman. You know who that is? White Goodman. Probably not. Ben Stiller from Dodgeball. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody makes me bleed my own blood. But, like, his whole 
like it, it was because he was like super fat, right? And yeah. Then he started Globo Gym. Yeah. I mean, just solid, solid character. Uh, thirty five. I got. There's no way you're gonna remember this one. I just remember this being like an all time great movie. Uh, I got Ted Crawford. Ted Crawford. You ever seen Fracture? No. Anthony Hopkins from Fracture. Uh, spoiler alert. Well, I don't. No, well, it's, I'm not gonna watch. It, it happens at the beginning of the movie. You should. He murders his wife. Oh, cool. And well, not cool. Well, it catches him cheating on her with a cop, and then he knows that the cop is gonna hear the call and be like the first one to the house. So he murders his wife, uh, and then he shows it, it's the whole. I'm not spoiling anything. Like this happens at the very beginning of the movie. <laughs> Uh, but that's the, not a spoiler for happens at the very beginning. The whole movie, the way the whole movie plays out, like Anthony Hopkins' character is like this genius. Uh, you have to watch it. Okay, Fracture. It's actually a really good movie. Uh, number four, I cheat twice. Oh, I cheat, I cheat a bunch in this. Shit. I'm only cheating twice. One of them is in the 34 spot. I just got Will Smith. Just everything he plays. Bad Boys, Bad Boys 2, Fresh, Fresh Prince, Prince, Men in Black. Uh, I mean, he's in, you know, uh, Hitch, you know. Uh, like, forget forget the, the you know. He plays a lot of damn good characters. So many good characters. A lot of men. I'll give you credit for that. Independence Day. Uh, Couldn't name you the fucking character. No, not a chance. But I can tell you it's Will Smith. And it's Will he, Smith, he right. fucking was great in that uh, movie. Dude, love Will Smith, dude. So funny. Uh, you know, uh, let uh, I Am Legend. Great and role. Didn't like I'm Legend. Yeah. That's uh, probably because I read the book and then, like the movie was kind of a like who reads books, dude. Me. And we're gonna go in there and just oh, you got characters and books. All oh, right. Yes. Uh, my number thirty three spot. I got Forrest Gump. What number? Thirty three. Uh, about to say, there's not a chance we hit a buzzer. If we on hit this a list, buzzer dude, on this list. This God bless insane. us. God bless us. Uh, so thirty three, Forrest Gump. Thirty two. I got Danny Ocean. Okay. You know, if you ever seen the Oceans, I guess it's a trilogy. There's eleven, whoa, twelve, thirteen. Whoa. But technically, I don't count the Sandra Bullock one. Well, that's eight. But also, there's an original Ocean's Eleven that's the Rat Pack, Rat Pack. back that in sucked. the like, 60s or yeah, 70s. Yeah, that movie sucked. I wanted to like it so bad. I wanted to like it, too. Um, Really? Hot garbage. Eh, well, if it wasn't for... like The Rat Pack honestly should have just been uh, Frank and... uh, Dude, I'm drawing a blank right now. Dean? Back. Dean, yeah. It should have just been them, too. Yeah, Sammy Davis Jr. Sammy Davis Jr. is trash. Garbage. Uh, uh, he was like the misfit of that group. Uh, so that was my 32. My number 31 spot. I got Peter Griffin. Don't have him. What? Dude, Peter Griffin. I mean. Not even the best family guy character. Oh, what, Stewie? No. Oh, Chris. The, the, Chris. Oh, dude. Dude, that, Chris is great. You're a maniac, dude. Great. Only because I feel like Seth Green writes his own parts. I hear you. Uh, but yeah, so that is uh, down to my 31. All right. Number 40. Books. Uh, I got Atticus Finch from To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, because that's okay. Dude was like one of the oh. best. Well, how do I I'll put this? One of the best characters that like displayed wisdom. I, I, I thought about putting it in there, but uh, I mean, it, everybody knows Atticus Finch, dude. Yeah. Number 39. Classic. Number 39. I got Mario. I went video yeah. games here. Yeah. It's me. All right. Iconic. Number, yeah. Yeah. Number 30. I got John McClane from Die Hard. Okay. Solid. Uh, 37. I'm a comic book guy. I don't know if people know that about me. I grew up reading it. Uh, some my first comic book character. I got Lex Luthor from Superman. Only because wait, that's uh wait, Lex. Why, why do I he's know the Lex, ball guy? Why do I know Lex Luthor? Probably one of the most popular comic book villains outside. As a villain, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All the reason I like him so much as a character because he's like the the perfect anti-Superman. Superman's an alien from outer space who gets all these powers just because he's born with it. Whereas Lex Luthor, he's actual human. He worked for everything he had, made all this tech, and he's just as good as Superman. That's like the whole point. Of so his he's character. like Batman. Yes. Against but, Superman. Yeah. He's basically Batman gone evil. Okay. Fair. All right. So that was my, my phone is phone. All right. So number 36, I got Jamie Lannister from Game of Thrones. Okay. No, I'm not a Game of Thrones guy. Only reason I have him because he, he starts off, everybody hates his fucking guts in that show. And then he ends up becoming like one of the most beloved heroes in the whole series. Great okay. character development. That probably has the best character development in the whole series. Number 35, my personal favorite comic book villain. But 
there's one that's obviously more iconic than this guy, but okay. my number 35, I got the Dr. Re- Doom. Okay. Uh, only because he's such a badass. Like Dr. He, Doom? Dr. Doom. Fantastic. Huh. He's like made of metal, has a green hood and all that shit. I'm sure you've seen pictures of him. Uh, the reason why he's my favorite is just like one moment that sticks out to me is when he got bit by a zombie. Didn't turn into a zombie because his willpower is so strong. Like He just like hungers beneath me. Okay. I thought that was just cool shit. Number 34. Probably one of the best fictional athletes ever. I got Shane Falco. I almost had him. That was one. I saw. I wasn't gonna. That was one of my honorable mentions, but I couldn't do honorable mentions because we had too many. Yep. Shane Falco, great, love yeah. him, dude. All right, number thirty-three. Going back to books, I got Jay Gatsby from The Great Gatsby. Okay. Biggest simp of all time. Through all these parties, <laughs> just hoping that girl would show up. Simp behavior, but he was a baller at the same did time. She, did she show up? No, never showed up to the parties. <laughs> okay well hate to see it homie ended up confessing his love to her then got shot by the ch- the chick's husband damn yeah hate Bruh. to see it oh well she was married uh yeah that happens but, <laughs> but the husband was cheating on the girl too damn can't have it all uh number 32 i got master chief from halo okay i did not think of video games at all but I they just, are characters yes they are characters. master chief iconic uh, shaped my uh high school years a lot of Halo land parties. Yeah, lost a lot of sleep over Halo. Yeah, my my, my number thirty one, who I think is probably the most iconic uh, video game character, based on how long it has survived, how long it's been popular. It's the most popular franchise, most valuable franchise going today. It's worth over a billion dollars. I got Pikachu. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. All right, so that's my forty through thirty one. So my number thirty. This is one you you should know by character name. Um, I got Ethan Hunt. Mission Impossible. Mission Heck. Impossible. Solid, you know. Uh, dude does his own stunts. Just and it's it's la- it's it's lasted the test of time. Yeah. Still, they're still making Mission Impossibles, aren't they? Yeah, they got a new one coming out. Uh, my number twenty nine spot. I got Leatherface. Good one. Like that's all you got to say. You immediately know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Right? Uh, so number twenty eight. You may get this one by the name. I highly doubt it. I got Doctor King Schultz. Doctor King Schultz. Why do I know that name? Oh, from uh, Glorious Bastards? No. Cl- okay. Might as well be. It's Christoph Waltz, Waltz from Django. Yeah, that was it. That was it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I had the wrong movie. I knew who you are talking about, though. Well, yeah, he's also in Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. Uh, that best- dude is one of the most underrated Christoph actors. Christoph Waltz is great, dude. He is a phenomenal actor. He, Every, he nails every role he plays. Yeah, great guy. Did He, he came up in our top 10 actors list, didn't he? I think he was in mine. Or honorable mention, maybe. But yeah, Christoph Waltz is great. 27, I got John Wick. Uh, should probably be higher, but uh, that's just where it fell in. Uh, number 26, I got Django. Django's a good character. Jamie, that's probably his best movies, either in Glorious Bastards or Django. Well, and Jamie Foxx, I feel like that's got to be his best role, too, is Django. It's either that or... Uh, was he in any given Sunday? Yeah, Willie Beeman. It's either Django, Willie Beeman, or the guy from uh, what was the movie you just we just talked about? Gerard Butler. Oh, law. Wait, law by citizen. Yeah, he was the that was the, great, the other yeah, attorney. He was, yeah, he was the other attorney. Yeah, he he, he was he, the prosecuting attorney, and he knew that he shouldn't be prosecuting him, but he was out of like, it, it was principle that yeah, he had. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so that's twenty six. My number twenty five spot. There's no way anybody knows this character's name, but everybody should. Terribly popular movie franchise, and it's the obvious main character. Okay. I got Brian Mills. Brian Mills. So just like it took, like, what, eight Mission Impossibles for people to remember Ethan Hunt? Brian Brian Mills is, is Liam Neeson from Taken. Oh shit! Good, good pick. Like all because I forgot his name. There's a the reason I probably didn't put him. Yeah, no, nobody remembers his fucking name. No, everybody knows. Oh, it's Liam Neeson. Nobody remembers it's Brian Mills as the character. Yeah, man, name. taken, taken two, great, taken three. You could, you could have gave me a hundred guesses just for the first name. I would have never guessed Brian. Me neither. You could have told me what's the guy's name from Taken. I'm like, mm, Doug. Uh, so my number twenty four spot. Okay, I think this is the only other place I cheat here. I got all versions of Jonah Hill. <laughs> okay. I mean, 21 Jump Street, Accepted, Super Bad, Moneyball, Wolf of Wall Street, This is the End, Get Him to the Greek. Uh, Jonah Hill just is an amazing character. Yes. He's a good character actor. Uh, 
And he's hilarious. He plays vaguely the same role in pretty much everything he's in. But they're so different that they're not the same. It's if that weird. makes any sense. Yeah. Because like even his super serious roles are still funny. He's funny. Like Moneyball. Yeah. But yeah, so I got all versions of Jonah Hill in the 24 spot. Um, my number 23 spot, I got Indiana Jones. Yeah, I'm gonna have him. All time classic character. Love the movies, but it's just eh, not a character I'm really I got you. Uh but again, it's his character. Like the character that he plays is, you know, it, uh, uh, number 22. Uh, I got the Terminator. Don't have it. Just because it's one of my Terminator 2, one of my favorite action movies of all time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess because, like, I was a kid when I watched it. And it's, I mean, I, if I went back and watched it now, eh, probably not that great. Who knows? I don't know. I haven't seen it since I was a kid. Oh, I actually watched Terminator 2 not too long ago. Yeah. Oh, it still holds up. Okay. Terminator, first Terminator, not so much. Terminator 2, that's probably phenomenal movie still. That might be, it's one of the few ever sequels that's clearly better than the original. Yeah, that outshines the entire franchise. Right, like you forget about Terminator 1 completely. Yeah, it's a lot of, it's just not that great in hindsight. But man, Terminator 2 is just a perfect movie. Uh, My number 21, Uh, yes, my last of this 10, yeah. 21, I got Ricky Bobby. Gotta love Ricky Bobby. Don't have him. Honestly, I could have put a ton of Will Ferrell characters. Brennan? No, Dale. No, yeah. it's Brennan. It's Brennan Hoff and Dale Doback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, I guess like I, if if I would have cheated another one, I could have put all uh you know all of Will Ferrell. But uh, I got Ricky Bobby, dude. It, it his confidence, <laughs> like just the way he carried carried that character. He carries all his characters. Like I think I, I think I have more. Didn't we talk about him in Elf? About how no other actor could have nailed that role. Nobody could. Not that good. No. Nah. Not that I can think. Possibly. Like if it had been any, if it had been like a Jim Carrey, we wouldn't even think about Elf. The only one that might have could have done it. John C. Riley. No. Uh, Robin Williams, maybe. I only think Robin Williams could have done it, just because he played wild, like, f- like. Like flamboyant roles. Ironically like enough, I think it could have been John C. Riley, maybe Jonah Hill, but I don't think he could have done nah, it. Now nah, John C. Riley could have. That's the only three, like him and maybe Robin Williams, but that's about the only ones on Earth that could have ever done yeah. it. All right, uh, my number thirty. This is where I cheat. I got the Ghostbusters. Interesting. All of them. Yeah, just all of them. The women too. No. Fuck them. That movie was horrible. <laughs> movie was, I, I try to like trash, it. Dude. I try to like it just because I like the whole concept of the Ghostbusters. Man, that movie just sucked. You can try, you know. Can't right. hate you for trying. Uh, number nine. I got the book version, not the movie version of this. I got Tyler Durden. You know who that is? Yeah, from uh, Fight Club. Fight Club, yes. Yeah. Uh, number 28. I got the dude. Oh, big, yeah. Uh, big Lebowski. Big, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've, I've actually, I don't think I've ever watched all of Big Lebowski. I get a lot of hate on that iconic character. Yeah, no doubt. Like perfect, perfect slacker. Uh, yeah, I got to go back and watch it. I, I think I got to rent it on Amazon. I think we've, we've actually been over it probably six times on this podcast over the life of it. But yeah, yeah. Uh, number twenty seven. That's what inspired the uh, like eight white Russians before episode one. Oh, the dude. Mm-hmm. Love white Russians because of him. <laughs> I think everybody likes white Russians because of him. Did people drink right white Russians before all that? I never had before that. No. Yeah. All right. Uh, number twenty-seven. When I think movie characters from the eighties, this is the first one that pops in my mind. I got Marty McFly from Back to the Future. Okay. Definitely a a wild character. Number twenty-six. Someone you already named. I got Forrest Gump. Yeah. I mean, life's like a box of chocolates, dude. Yeah. So never know what you got to run. Yeah. <laughs> I just felt like running. Yeah. Uh, and number- still, that's probably one of my favorite memes of. Of all time, it's a classic. It's like, yeah, my last relationship, I was like Forrest Gump. Um, it was like, wait, it's it's worded, but it's like, yeah, she was a whore and I was retarded. Or <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Uh, oh shit, I hate when that happens when you click something and just scrolls. Yeah, off dude, Bye. I hate the, the notes app has been pissing me off. Like, like you'll click the type and then it skips way down the list somewhere Man, random. Fuck them. All right, uh, number twenty five. I'm probably the only person who loves this character more than anybody. I got Ned Flanders from The Simpsons. Oh, yeah. Okay. That dude's just fucking hilarious. When it comes to like funny characters in The Simpsons, I think personally he's the funniest. 
Okay. But as far as iconic, not so much. That's why I bought well, it. That's one of the funnier names, Ned Flanders. Yeah. Uh, so. Number 24, going back to comic books and movies. I like all versions of this character. I got Spider Man. Okay. Uh, I almost put him on my list, but I did. All right. Respect. Uh, number 23, you said you had Dwight Goodman from Dodgeball. I got his counterpart. I got Tony Perkins from Heavyweights. Same character. Oh, same guy. Yeah, yeah. same guy. Ben Stiller. I got Tony Perkins. Uh, lunch today has been canceled due to lack of hustle. Last, lack of hustle. <laughs> Dude. Oh, wait. Was that the movie where they found all the snacks and stuff in the bedpost? Yeah. Okay. Look at this. A deli meat. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Fucking love heavyweights. Uh, number 22. I got Frodo from Lord of the Rings. Okay. Solid. Solid. Uh, number 21. I got John Rambo. Oh, Rambo. Yeah. Yeah. I should have had him in hindsight, honestly. Yeah. All right. So that goes my uh, 30 to 21. All right. So now we're going to do 20 to 16. Yes. All right. So my number 20. Uh, you may be able to guess this person by the character name. I got Kirk Lazarus. Kirk Lazarus. Kirk Lazarus. I know that name. It's uh, Robert Downey Jr. from Tropic Thunder. Yes. Yes. Dude, that, that character. Movie still holds up to. <laughs> He's a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude. Exactly. That is the most meta character <laughs> in the history of film. And he never breaks. Mm -mm. Not the least bit, not one mm -mm. time. It's an amazing character, dude. It's an amazing movie. Uh, not one weak fucking performance <laughs> by anybody. So that's my 20 spot. My number 19, I got Jeremy Gray. Who? Another name, another character name you would never know, but it's Vince Vaughn from Wedding Crashers. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I like him. He plays a good slimy piece of shit. I could have played. I could. I like Chaz better. Will Ferrell's character in that. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, like... Oh, look at me. I'm hanging on. I'm hanging on. Oh, I'm oh, 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 dead. <laughs> what a loser. <laughs> uh, but Vince Vaughn, though, I honestly could have put all Vince Vaughn. Every character he plays yeah. is great. Oh, another character I love in uh, Wedding Crashers is the gay brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I call it celebration. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's sexual and violent. Uh, that's my number Let's 19. Let's play Tommy Sticks. That's my number 19. My number 18. I got Rain Man. Yeah, he bankrupted the casino. Yeah, dude's a genius. Basically a retard. <laughs> uh, but like shout out to Alan. That that oh yeah, that that scene where like they dropped the toothpicks on the ground, 82, 82, 82, 246. And and then he, they look at the box, he's like, Oh man, it's there's 250. And she's like, uh, there's four left in the box. And he's like, that's when he realized, like, hold on. And then he goes and gets the decks of cards and start boop, 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 throwing them out. He's like, Yeah, there's this left, this left, this left, this left. Like uh, but yeah, Rain Man, all time classic movie. It is. Tom and, Cruise plays a good piece of shit in that as well. Oh, dude, I mean, talk of yeah. Uh, but yeah, Rain Man, uh, Dustin Hoffman, right? Yeah. Uh, my number seventeen spot. I got another Anthony Hopkins. Take a wild guess. Hannibal. Hannibal. Yeah. Good villain. Great villain. Amazing uh, villain. I give you that. That's my seventeen. My number sixteen spot. I got Ace Ventura. Dude. Hold on, we'll get to that in just a minute. Oh, Not dude. a buzzer. Oh, dude, I mean, Ace Ventura is great, dude. All right, we'll get back to it. So All right, number 20, I got Bart Simpson. Okay, yeah. Number 19, I got Rocky. Okay. The only reason I peg him down some is because later movies, he kind of sucks as a character. Eh, yeah. First uh, four Rocky movies, I love him to death. Every Rocky movie after Rocky Four, he kind of sucks. He's a little whiny bitch. Mark. That's why he's not in my top 10. I still love him though. Number 18, I got the Joker. Too low, dude. Okay, we'll get back to that later. Number 17, one of my personal favorite heroes, I got Captain America. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. And number 16, one reason I said, dude, I got, uh, I cheated again. I got Lloyd Christmas and Harry Dunn. You said Jim Carrey character. I got another Jim Carrey character coming at my number 16 spot. Okay. Wait, Lloyd Christmas, what? And Harry Dunn. Oh, both of them. Yeah. I got Dumb and Dumber. Okay, Dumb and Dumber. Gotcha. Couldn't separate them. Uh, we're going to get back to some of that. Okay. Awesome. All I'm right. glad you got them. So my number 15 spot, honestly, dude, could have been, probably should have put him top five, no, honestly. I got Wayne Campbell. From Wayne's World? Wayne's World. Yeah, nice. Mike Myers. Dude, another, that movie, I feel like it'll like hold stand the test of time. That movie is always, just... The way the movie is like the care the way their characters are played, and then still probably the one of the funniest skits of any movie of all time 
is when they're bashing on selling out to like sponsors. And they're all wearing sponsors shit. Like they're Adidas. Like Adidas jumpsuits. And Sipping then he's on. like, he's like, I got a headache. And he's like, here, take these. And it's just <laughs> two Tylenol. And yes. it's like, and they're drinking like Dr. Pepper. And they're s- s- sitting there. It's like, I don't know, man. I could just never sell out. Like, <laughs> and every time they go back and forth, they're like cutting the promo for some sort of yes. product. It's freaking awesome. Uh, so Wayne Campbell, my number 14 spot. Um, uh, I'm going to say, I don't know which one you would recognize more. I got Brian O'Connor. I know the name. Or you also, you probably recognize Brian Earl Spilner. No. Oh, dude. Paul Walker. From the Fast and the Furious. Oh, Fast and the Furious. Yeah. Okay. You could have said Dominic Toretto and I got that a lot sooner. Well, that's a different character. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, Paul Walker's character, just such a lovable character. Yes, he is very likable. Everybody loved Paul Walker. Not, I'm not saying because he died. I'm just saying that it's just a very likable no, Everybody character. loved Paul Walker from uh, Fast, Fast and Furious. Especially yeah. the part where he gets that car almost had you. Yeah. Everybody's like, yeah, you did. And, and, well, and he goes in there and orders the tuna all the time. And he's like, nobody likes the tuna here. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's 14. Number 13, I got Ron Burgundy. I'm Ron Burgundy. Uh, got, I mean, it's a tough race for uh, – uh, Will Ferrell's like number one character, but I, I feel like it's got to be Ron Burgundy. Yeah. Uh, number 12 spot. I got Neo. Good pick. Keanu I Reeves. Uh, I mean, iconic movie franchise. I like him as a character. I just don't like the movies. You know, I, you don't like the Matrix, dude? Not really. Couldn't really get into it. Uh, I like Neo as a character. I thought he was dope as fuck. Yeah. Uh, my number 11 spot. Um, Kind of well, dude. I have one of my top ten. Everybody's probably gonna hate it. We're gonna get there. Uh, my number eleven spot. I got Bugs Bunny. Don't have him. No Bugs Bunny, dude. No Bugs. I mean, he was like part of our all of our childhood, uh, all all the way into. I've got space. characters like him. Huh? Okay. Fair. All right. All right uh, number fifteen. We actually talked about him today in the Boot Crew Media Chat. Mike Bergeron, shout out. I got Larry David at number 15 from Curb Your Enthusiasm. Okay. Him. Like I said, he's basically Frank Costanza, George Costanza rolled into one character and curses a lot. Well, he's playing a character of himself. Yeah, he's playing like a more intense version of himself. It's not really Larry David as himself. Well, it is the himself that he wants to be. Yes, but he's like, so, in real life, he's so quiet and reserved, but Larry David and Curb Your Enthusiasm is a total asshole, but he, one of the funniest fucking characters in all of fiction. I've never seen Curb. Dude, you I, have to. I know. Watch I Curb. want to. Like, I, I love Seinfeld. It's one of my. If like, you love Seinfeld, 100% you'll love Curb. But Curb is on what? Uh, like HBO, HBO Max. Yeah, I don't have it. I'll give you my password for that shit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm sure it's a great character. I've, heard, I've always heard good things, you know? Yeah. Uh, number 14, I cheat again. I got every, every fucking character in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <sighs> okay. That's just what I grew up on. I watched that movie probably more than any other movie I've I watched you. in my life. I tried to watch it. I couldn't get into it. Dude, that's, that's a, I got to go back and try it again. That's I a get Jake it. problem. For the sake of culture, I got to watch yeah. it. Uh, number 13, I got Darth Vader. Okay. And number 12, Luke Skywalker. Yeah, that was a good back-to-back. Good yeah. back-to-back. And number 11, almost cracked the top 10. Couldn't justify putting him in the top 10 over any of these other guys. I got Jerry Seinfeld. I knew you. I knew you were about to say that. Couldn't justify it. Well, he's not that good of a character. I love him as a character because he's such a like. Everybody thinks he's like a good guy. People who just watch Seinfeld, are like, oh, he's a nice guy. No, Jerry Seinfeld is a fucking horrible person in that show. Like he is absolutely terrible. I get it, but his character is just a dude. Yeah, and he's funny as hell. Okay. All right, so now let's get into the perfect 10. All right, so at the end of the perfect 10, honestly, look, y'all may not believe this when we tell y'all this. We don't know each other's list at all. We don't. Don't have the first clue. And we just did, we're doing top 50s. It would be some shit if we hit a buzzer. It would be, but, I mean, couldn't be a better segue from your 11 into my 10. I got Cosmo Kramer. Hmm, like it. A wild coincidence that the segue worked out like that. Yeah, that's a wild, wild ass coincidence. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Cosmo Kramer is by a mile the best character on that show. And you can even tell in the early episodes, 
every time Cosmo would come in a scene, it would they would they would light they would light the applause light. Yeah. Right. Now when that later seasons they fucking they had something to stop clapping. Right. Yeah. Like Kramer, his he was, he was the most popular character. Yeah. Well, he he's so like just a wild. There, there's he's a, an enigma. And there's a word for it, dude. I can't think of it. I'm sure it'll come to light. My brain's not working all the way right now. Uh, but Cosmo Kramer, if if you don't watch Seinfeld, then I don't know what you're doing. But uh, so that's my ten spot. My number nine spot. Uh, you mentioned him already. Y'all have heard of me shout this out in tons of my number one spots when re- in reference to comedy movies. I got Lloyd Christmas. Perfect. I mean, just hilarious. Jim Carrey. I, I almost try to put like the mask in his uh, stretch in the nineties with those movies. Yeah. On match. Well, I, mean, I don't already, think I'll ever match. I had Ace Ventura in there too, but Ace Ventura, uh, dumb and dumber, the mask. Right. Like his like, liar, liar. Right. Dumb the nineties belong to Jim Carrey. Dumb and dumber. Uh, Lloyd Christmas. I mean, just an unbelievable character. Yes. Uh, that was my number nine spot. My number eight spot. Um, not necessarily, my one of my personal favorite movie franchises of all time, but how iconic this character was and still is, I felt like it belonged in the top 10. Um, was all of our anybody our age their favorite video game growing up? Oh, shit. we're so close to hitting that buzzer. We were close. I got James Bond. Well, that's your number. That's my number eight. My number 10, James Bond. Oh, dude. See, people are not going to believe that we don't know each other. We don't, lists. but man, we were so close on that. That's perfect nuts. segue, though. You can't get better than there that. There you go. Number 10, I got a James Bond. Yeah. Video game and movie. I like, mean, Pierce Brosnan is my James Bond. Uh, oh, Daniel Craig's my James Bond. Yeah. Well, I guess I grew up watching, which I mean, even still, uh, who was it before? Um, Roger Moore. No, I'm thinking. Uh, Timothy Dalton. No. I'm thinking, dude, from a uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh, Sean Connery. Sean Connery. He's the first one. Okay, yeah. Uh, but no, I grew up like, um, uh, uh, dude, I can't. There's so many of them. Uh, and I love Live the, and Let Die. Uh, Tomorrow Never Dies. Even the the shitty campy ones are fun to watch, like Moonraker. Right. I got to go back and watch all of them again. I actually have it on my list, but like, net for some reason, dude, I I have a list of solid all time classic movies, like. That just for the sake of like the culture of you know cinema. Well, fuck next. Uh, Netflix don't have ninety five percent of them. Yeah. Hulu don't have. Them. Next uh, New Year's we gotta do movies, just overall movies. <sighs> okay, dude, that's why we do New Year's. We we make that's it broad gonna for be a, a tough one. That's why I make it broad for. A All reason. right, so yeah, next New Year's. I mean, shout out. If wait, you gotta wait for a year, but next New Year's you're getting top fifty movies of all time. Yeah, might as well start working on that, <sighs> just so we can have a more detailed. Yeah, fifty. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that was your ten. Number ten, number nine. Oh you wait, were- fun fact, dude. My membership at uh, at Oak Knoll Country Club. My member number is 007. <laughs> whenever they, whenever they gave me that, I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I'll just you felt randomly, like a baller. I randomly got this. Yeah, you felt like a baller. All right, number nine. I got Homer Simpson. I thought you had him way too low. Okay, yeah, the I had iconic him. Iconic cartoon. Like, I think he's more iconic than Bart Simpson, but. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll take Homer over Bart any day. Good. And number eight, I got Han Solo from Star Wars. Yeah. Cool motherfucker. He gets lower down, but I get frozen in carbonite. Girl says, I love you. He just doesn't, he just says, I know. And gets frozen. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, that's, that's pimp Ball, shit right yeah. there. Uh, so, oh, dude. See, dude, I wish you did not. That, that getting, getting frozen thing just reminded me of, uh, idiocracy. Yeah. That's uh, a good movie. Uh, the most average person on earth 500 years from now was the smartest man on earth. What's what was uh, what, uh, uh, Luke oh, Wilson? Luke Wilson, yeah. Anyway, that was your 10 on eight. Yeah, the my number seven. Nobody is gonna see this coming. You might hate this pick, but as far as fictional characters goes, this is a top 10 fictional character. Okay, uh. It was a wild, very short-lived run during our childhood when this was, was – I feel like it was a popular type of movie. I don't know why. Animal actors. You got Air Bud? Air Bud. Oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yes, dude. Air Bud, dude. This mother- <laughs> I put Free Willy over Air Bud. 
No, dude. No, Airbud was I playing. I put fucking Lassie over Airbud. Dude, Airbud was playing basketball. He was catching passes. He was uh playing baseball. He was playing volleyball. Okay, multi sport athlete. I respect it. Yeah, I mean, th- dude, <laughs> such an absurd character that this kid this kid moves to a new town. He he, he couldn't make any friends, and then he realizes his dog can shoot hoops. Dude, so, just draining them. So then his dog makes the high school basketball team. <laughs> Starts over him. <laughs> like, it's a ridiculous character. Uh, yeah. That movie made no sense, but somehow it worked. They played like, like all the sequels and junk are so stupid. Uh, uh, but <laughs> this motherfucker put Air Bud. Dude, Air, he grossed over 300 mil. Airbud did. All right. <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> uh anyway, but I mean Airbud. When we're talking about fictional characters, a dog that plays sports successfully. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my seventh spot. Oh. My number six spot. Uh I got Superman. Too low. Okay. All uh, right. Superman, everybody, everybody knows Superman. Like yeah. it's such an iconic character. It had to be top ten. Just like everybody. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go <laughs> into my number seven. Of course, he was going to come. I got everybody else from the show. I got George Costanza, number oh. seven. Dude, George is perfect. No. Perfect. He's too much. He reminds me of Jake Lambert. Okay. Fair. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. But not like in a good way. No, George is just. Jake too- is like George Costanza in a bad way. So, like, when I say George is too much, like, I would take Frank over George any day. Like, Frank is zero to 100. That's his entire character. Yes. All he is is either kind of relaxed and then immediately losing his mind. It's hilarious. Yeah. Serenity now. Yeah. My therapist told me to say that over and over. He's shouting it. George, he's just a little, what, it, neurotic, I think. Yeah, that's the word I was that's looking exactly. for. A but little too much. Larry David based George off of himself when he wrote this with Jerry. But, man, the funniest moments in all Seinfeld all happened because of George. I'd say Kramer or Frank. Shit. Or when you get Kramer and Frank together. That's when you get gold. Mm -mm. That was your seven? That was my seven. Number six, I got books, movies, television. I got Sherlock Holmes. Okay. Yeah, as you would have that. I love me some Sherlock Holmes. Any any medium, love it. I wish I was more familiar with the whole... The Benedict Cumberbatch. uh, Sherlock Holmes is by far my favorite. Okay. That was the show that you had to wait like four years between seasons. Okay. So, three episodes a season. Similar to a pick that I have higher in my list. Yeah, so that's my seven, six. Okay, my number five spot. I don't know why I love this movie so much, but this character, I feel like it, again, my fan theory on this movie is totally different than what everybody agrees it is. Um, I got Patrick Bateman. American Psycho. American Psycho. Not surprised you have him. Dude, I, lo- I love American Psycho, dude. And Huey Lewis in the news. Huey, exactly. Huey Lewis, but uh, Christian Bale's character, which honestly, you could have a handful of different Christian Bale characters. Uh, but Patrick Bateman, um, if you've never seen American Psycho, go watch it. I, Great movie. It is a wild, it's a thriller. Um, I would say it's somewhat of a mystery uh, because I think there's a much different underlying theme than what everybody agrees that what the theory of the movie is. And that is. Well, my, my theory is that, so everybody thinks that in the, like it was all in his imagination. No, I don't think it was. I believe that everybody is so detached from reality in this like corporate world that they live in. Yeah. Uh, typical that, uh, rabbit run that they don't even like, they get each other's names wrong throughout the movie. Um, and like, um, uh, so when they're calling him, um, dude, what was, uh, what was Jared Leto's character's name? I don't remember. Can't, couldn't tell you. Anyway. So the whole time he's like, he confesses to his, uh, his attorney or, or therapist or whatever. And they're like, no, you didn't do that. Blah, blah, blah. And they're like, I think everybody, they're all so self-involved and, and obsessed with only what's going on in their world that they don't even realize what's going on around him and he's actually living out all these horrors like he lives outside the box right i, I agree with that 100 but like everybody thinks that like, i've always thought that it was well. all in his mind 
No, I don't think it was. I've always thought it wasn't in his mind. I thought it actually happened. People were just like, nah, it's all in your mind, Patrick. Dude, what were they called? Because, no, there was, like, two different dudes that called him the other guy's name the entire time. Dude, I haven't – I got to go back and watch it again. I watched it, like, two years ago. But, no, if you haven't seen American Psycho, which we might have just ruined it for you. That was kind of yeah, kind it. of a lead of a spoiler. If you haven't seen it after we hyped it up so many times on this podcast. We have hyped that, it that, about that, – That's your fault. A baker's dozen times. So, yeah, uh, yeah that is my five spot. My number four spot. I got Rocky Balboa. Okay. All time, which I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. They've drug it out way too long. Like I said, after movie four, after he retired, quote unquote, from boxing, he became a little whiny bitch. But he was such a, you know, American, like, success, like, a, you know. Yeah, he's the Italian stallion. He's the underdog. Right. Yeah, it's such an underdog story. You got to love Rocky. Yeah, and dude, watch a Rocky marathon and try not to go, like, run around. Right. And start shadow box. Yeah, it's such a just such a great movie. So that's my five four. All right. My number five, I got Gandalf and Lord of the Rings. Like when I watch nice. when I start watching uh, Lord of the Rings, dude, that that's the character that I fucking could not get enough of. Yeah, fair. All right. And my number four spot, I got Dracula. Ah. The horror movie villain. Dude, like the ultimate horror I movie. I almost had Dracula on my list, dude. Love me some Dracula. Um uh, his character was based off somebody we had from worst so, people ever is uh, Vlad the Impaler. That's who they based Dracula off of. Right, so I almost had Dracula, but when I dug through my brain, like I didn't really dig in the research on Dracula too much, but I couldn't remember any specific role of Dracula. I remember the concept of Dracula, which like inspired... Hypnotized ladies. Inspired all of basically the obsession of like vampire culture like oh there's so many va vampire shows and stuff yeah you know? and it's basically all because yeah of it, it's because of dracula but vampire shows kind of made him lame right because every time they try to make dracula present day he sucks but man classic dracula the best like he like he like lay a woman instead of calling an uber he just like suck their neck and kill them uh, fair i mean sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do <laughs> can't have uh, those uh clingers you know so my number three spot all right top three we're making it yeah my number three spot, yeah, 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 you yeah, kind of somewhat threw shade on him earlier. For the sake of how strong it's held up from the entire series of movies. Okay. I got Dom Toretto. Dom Toretto. I like Dom Toretto. I mean, you, you can't. He's been a strong character throughout that whole you franchise. You can't disagree with the success of the franchise. It's, pro it's probably one of the most highest grossing franchises yeah. of movies of all time. But they're not bad movies. Right. Even Tokyo Trip's a cool movie. Yeah, everybody hates on Tokyo Jeff. I don't know why. Yeah. Well, I remember when it came out, people were uh drifting in the parking lot. No, oh, yeah, dude. Everybody I was, was trying to. Yeah. Everybody was trying to drift. Uh, but yeah, it, it, fucking up their brakes in the meantime. If you, I mean, the whole Fast and the Furious franchise, Dom Toretto, I mean, the dude is dumb rich off of it now. Like, I think he owns it. I don't know if he does or not. Uh I'm pretty sure he started it. I'm not, but dude, shout out to him. Yeah. Went from boiler room and immediately went to uh Fast and Furious. He was a badass in Boiler Room if you haven't seen it. Well, you remember Triple X. Triple X kind of sucked. Yeah, but I mean, uh, I guess Triple X came in the middle of the Fast and the Furious stuff. It came, it had to come after the first one. Riddick, the Chronicles of Riddick came before the Fast and the Furious, yes. right? Was, I love the Riddick uh, trilogy. It was Boiler Room, Riddick, and then Fast and the Furious. And then Triple X was mixed in there. Now, when you go back and watch Boiler Room, he's not believable as like this big time Wall Street dude. Okay, yeah, I don't think I've seen that. Dude, Bullet Room kicks ass. If you okay. Love that movie. But yeah, Dom Toretto, number three spot. Number three, I thought you got, he had this cat way too low. I got Superman. Superman, okay. Yeah, like the ultimate good guy. I had him top ten. Yeah, I mean, it's good. I mean, out of 50 and, and out of those 50, out of thousands of fictional characters. Millions. Yeah, millions. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Superman. So, everybody loves Superman. Like yeah. I said, he's the ultimate good guy. He's truth, He's justice, every kid's hero. In the American way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you just... You got to love Superman, you know? Oh, of course. That was your three? Uh, yeah, that was your three. We haven't said my number two. You already All right, go. I'm going to hit a buzzer, right? What if we nail a buzzer? Okay, see, I think we're going to be one pick off. I think we might. So my number two spot. This is purely from, I've said it before many times in this podcast, the creativity of this character, of the show in general. That's a show, never mind. But of this specific, of this specific character, I think it's possibly the most creative role of any show of all time. I got Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty. Didn't think about it. Like, whoever's first off, like, the show 
they do their research when it comes to physics and philosophy. Exactly. They like they're very well versed in physics and philosophy. So it's first all very to make that show flow. Very accurate and a very difficult topic for one. And then his character, the way like you have to watch the show to get it, but like it's just so well thought out. And I mean, I get it. It's a cartoon that's playing, but like whoever creates that character has got to be a certified genius. I, he's really not though. He only even tell you in zero. Like I'm stupid. It's like, I, it's like, I just know enough to make it work in the show. But like, the but he's well, like he the makes, concept of the character is so deep in its thought process. Yeah. Like the way they, like the, the, the extra worlds that they, and the way they interact with one another. Yeah. And like I don't know, just the sh the show is so creative. Like a, I like how like he blends like how another world views a civilized civilization. Yeah, it's basically like I say. When we think of alien planets, we think they'll be civilized like us. No. Oh yeah, he the that's why I think it's so much more creative than Star Wars is. Like the stuff that's made up in Rick and Morty, it I don't know who's making it up. This person, uh, Dan Harmon, is thinking on a totally different level. Yeah, he's he smokes a lot of weed. Uh. Yeah, but also like just the creativity of the show that and his character specifically, the way he operates within the show, I think is one of the most creative characters of all time. Yeah, uh, my number two. Your number two is probably going to be my number one. Batman. No. Nah. What? You don't even have Batman ranked? No. Nah. That's insane. Okay. You don't even have the Joker ranked, man. Okay. That's crazy to me. Wait, you're on your two? I'm on my two. Okay. Batman. Well, the reason, main reason I have Batman all right, well, is all real, his real quick, step, my number one, Joker. Okay. I already, already ranked Joker, but okay. But I got Batman at my number two because he single-handedly saved DC Comics from being barred out by Marvel Comics, all because of the Dark Knight movies. Okay. So the reason I put the Joker instead of Batman is because Joker is such a perfect villain. It could be argued that he is a great villain. I don't think he's the perfect villain. Well, I mean, like, so Batman, I, I, I was kind of back and forth between, honestly, which one I was going to put. For one, uh, I got the Joker because the Joker is, I guess, like similar to a, a Superman reference in Seinfeld. Uh, the Joker has to be referenced or, or, or seen in every episode. Of here, yes. Uh, no matter what, you're going to see a, a reference to the joke. Uh, but uh, the joke, so yeah, Batman, I agree. Yeah, you're, you're seeing now one thing that changed that the people may or may not realize on yeah. the screen. If you're watching, which, hey, I don't know if we've shouted out on this episode or not, go subscribe to Boot Crew Media's YouTube page because we're in video format now. You yeah. Can, you can look at our beautiful faces. You can watch me talk with my yeah. hands way too much the entire episode. Uh, you can see this beautiful backdrop that is slowly developing. Uh, you can find there's one sweet, sweet nugget mm -hmm. that we cannot reference in any way. Mm-hmm. But is uh it is a cornerstone of this podcast. That's all we can say. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, but no. So I, I had the Joker instead of Batman just because I don't know. There's something about the Joker's character. He's the antithesis of of a hero, right? Like he's. I see what you're saying. Like he's like the perfect villain. But I don't think he's the perfect villain in the sense that I don't. I, in my opinion, I think the perfect villain is one that you can sympathize with as well okay so that's what they tried to do with the new joker movie they tried to get you to understand where his it, it, pain came from but at the same time i was like eh, you, you're just a weirdo dude okay same if they would have cut about 45 minutes out i thought of that it would have been a great movie I agree. it would have been an amazing i, I movie. thought it was too because the little the that. little nuggets that they gave you of how he was beaten down by but, wife I, like yeah people but, can sympathize with that part but, but he also was a horrible person within being beaten down yeah which he, is the part that made you he was not very to sympathize with he him. was very selfish he was very creepy right overall weirdo right but i just love the joke i mean everybody loves heath ledger dude that too that, like, that was one of the best roles i've ever seen uh but no so yeah i get it you got batman in your two spot i got the joker in my one spot all right my number one you ranked him way too low i feel like when I said at the beginning of the episode, somebody, guess, dude. somebody who stands the test of time shapes our culture. Who do you think it is? Shapes our culture. From our childhood. Every childhood runs into this cat, shapes them, makes them behave. He sees them when they're sleeping. He knows when they're awake. Oh, Santa Claus. Santa Claus. As far as fictional characters goes, it's 
when you say stands the test of time, yeah, absolutely. Like, dude, he he he's, he's a eternal. juggernaut. He's eternal. <laughs> he's eternal. Like we'll be having Santa Claus when we're dead old in the dirt. Yeah, Santa Claus. He, I feel like, I mean, I guess Santa Claus can never die because every, every child wants to believe. believe. Right. That's why I think he's the best fictional character. The he only, makes kids fucking behave too. The only way he dies is that if for a while there there was a slow g- growth in the culture of parents never lying to their kids in any way yeah which is kind of a weird thing like you got to kind of fib with them dude i lie to my kids every damn day right. I'm, I'm i'm going to as well you have to you got you got to so there's no way that culture is going to take hold but that was a thing for a while there there was a whole like movement of i don't know it, it was weird but anyway yeah santa claus probably will live forever yeah, and the, the fact that I put him at number one it came, I did have him at my number four spot until last week, and then I moved him up to my number one because at work I actually dressed up as Santa Claus, and I saw kids just lose their fucking mind over me. Okay, well, that's nice, dude. Yeah, and I scared the shit out of them. <laughs> well, the, the funny thing is over, it might be in Hungary. It's somewhere in Europe where Santa Claus is like this, he's like an evil version of Santa Claus. No, that's, uh, it's, you're thinking of Krampus. Krampus, yeah. That's like Germany. Okay. Like he picks up little kids. Like so, instead of I like, like Krampus. Ins- Krampus rules. Instead of where ours, where you try to, uh, you know, uh, we get positive reinforcement, whereas right. Krampus is negative reinforcement. Correct. You introduce a negative stimuli, yeah. which is Krampus. He's gonna pick your ass up. Bye bye, bitch. Uh, <laughs> that's what you get for hitting your sister. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's it's, uh, it's a hilarious. You know, opposed, concept. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, we should adopt a Krampus over here too. <laughs> Santa and Krampus. If you're good, you get Santa. You're bad, you get Krampus. Well, yeah, true. I mean, I guess might as well. Hey. Uh, we're not running. I'm not running my <laughs> down. I mean, let's fire through rundowns, dude. Let's fly through. All right, let's do it. All right, my number fifty. Bill, not a science guy. Uh, forty nine. Uh, dude, this is too. It's too much. <laughs> <laughs> I told you. <laughs> because the thing is, this is your top ten. Okay, top 10. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. My number 10, Cosmo Kramer uh, from Seinfeld. I mean, if you didn't know that, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, number nine, Lloyd Christmas. Uh, number eight, James Bond. Number seven, Air Bud. Number six, Superman. Number five, Patrick Bateman. Number four, Rocky Balboa. Three, Dom Toretto. Two, Rick Sanchez. And number one, The Joker. All right. Uh, my number 10 spot, I've got... James Bond, number nine, Homer Simpson, number eight, Han Solo, number seven, George Costanza, number six, Sherlock Holmes, five, Gandalf, four, Dracula, three, Superman, two, Batman, number one, Santa Claus. Solid. We did it. That was a run. All right, and tune in next week. We're going to do uh, top ten moments from 2021. Yeah, things that happened in 2021, and then the next one is 2022 predictions. Or projections. All right, whatever. I guess it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, stuff that's going to happen in 2022. Yeah, we're, we're very confident it's going to happen. Yeah. Wait, so stuff you're very confident it's going to happen or things you're hoping to happen? I think I'm going to do confident, not what I want to happen, because I can go on for fucking days. Okay, mine's going to be somewhere in the mix of those two things. Okay. Okay, anyway. All right, so, oh, wait, you had a uh, fun fact ready, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I uh, mentioned Lord of the Rings characters over here. Fun fact, J.R.R. Tolkien actually wrote Lord of the Rings because before he wrote Lord of the Rings, he actually invented a language. He invented Elvish language, and he wrote a book just to, so he can introduce that language. That's pretty tight. Yeah, the dude's like, I invented this language, now how do I get it out to the world? Okay, I'll just write a book about it. it is, you got to be a genius to create a language. Well, he took a lot of Finnish and mixed it up with some other languages, but, he, but still creating a language, that's genius-level shit. Yeah. I can't create a language. Not, not a chance. With verbs and conjugation and all that? All right. Fuck that. But anyway, all right, so we'll see y'all Monday. Oh, Happy New Year's. Happy New Year's. Peace.